My name is Martin Ng and I am a baritone. Welcome back to the Martin Ng channel. And in today's topic, we're going to talk about how much or how little we know opera. Now, I always, I, I always ask my friends, um, do you like opera? How much do you know about opera? Do you know opera? And they often say, uh, um, I don't really know opera. I can't appreciate opera. Or my favorite opera is Phantom of the Opera. <coughs> It's not an opera, it's a musical, uh, and that's always um, a common response. Uh, I'm actually going to show you in today's episode, we know more opera than we actually realize, and there are 10 tunes that are so popular, so diffused, and so prevalent that you can no longer deny that you don't know opera. So please stay tuned to find out. If you like my channel, please do not forget to subscribe on the subscribe button, and if you want to receive notifications, please click the notification bell as well. So let's stay tuned to find out. I'm sure you heard of this piece, which is taken from Richard Wagner's opera the Valkyrie, the Valkyries, uh, which itself forms part of a tetralogy called The Ring uh, by Richard Wagner, based on l Nordic legends. The Valkyries, daughters of Wotan, king of gods, in this scene are bringing back the souls of heroes that have been killed in battle back to the holy hall of Valhalla to be glorified. So you find that the music is very, very stirring and especially when used in movie soundtracks which depicts war scenes, it can be used to very, very good effect. It is a very, very popular piece of music and I'm sure if you're curious, maybe you want to go and find out the rest of the music in Die Valkyrie by Richard Arthur. All your opera virgins would have heard of this tune called Nessun Dorma. Um, even if you don't know that this tune actually comes from the opera Turan Dot by Giacomo Puccini. Um, if you've not heard it in the opera itself, you've probably heard it by some Il Volo or Il Divo. Even Sarah Brightman has done a version of it in a more accessible form. Well, but in its original form, it comes from the opera Turan Dot, uh, set in China. In the opera, the princess cuts off the heads of all her suitors in marriage if they don't solve three riddles. Now the prince who sings Nessun Dorma solves these three riddles much to Turandot's horror. However, the prince says he's an anonymous, anonymous prince. However, the prince tells her that if she finds out his name, he will offer his life in sacrifice to her. So what does this horrible princess do? She orders that the whole of Beijing find out this name of this anonymous prince so nobody can sleep in Beijing. That's why the name of this area is called Nessun Dorma. Figaro, 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 Son qua, figaro qua, figaro la, figaro qua, figaro la, figaro su, figaro giù, figaro su, figaro giù. Pronto, prontissimo, son come il fulmine, son il facotum della città, della città, della città, della città, della città. Ah, bravo figaro, bravo bravissimo, ah, bravo figaro, bravo bravissimo. A te fortuna, a te fortuna, a te fortuna, non mancherà. La 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 A te fortuna, a te fortuna, a te fortuna, non mancherà. Sono il facotum della città, sono il facotum della città, della città, della città, della città. Salutation, snack. 
Number eight position goes to Largo al Factotum from Rossini's opera The Barber of Seville. Now, it is an extremely popular tune, so you can't really say that you have not heard it before. Somewhere, in some way or other, from an advertisement, from a cartoon, or even from a movie. I'm sure it's been used in some movies or in one way or another. The music comes from Rossini's opera The Barber of Seville, written in 1816, and today it still remains as one of Rossini's most performed and well loved opera. The character in this role is Figaro, the factotum of the city, Mr. Noel, and you'll probably notice that in the song, he sings the lyrics at very, very quick speed, uttering as many words in the shortest possible time. This is what is typical of Rossini's style called the patter song. So if you're curious to know more about Rossini's style, have a listen to the rest of his operas, not just the Barber of Seville, but there are also other very famous operas like La Cenerentola, Il Turco in Italia, The Turk in Italy, and l'italiana in Algeria, the Italian girl in Algiers. Now this piece is the Toria the song from Carmen and of course the lyrics have changed but it's actually again from the opera by Bizet, Carmen of a swashbuckling toreador or a matador and uh, it's one of the most popular pieces or the most easily recognizable tunes in, in opera so what's this story about this story is actually sung by the protagonist one of the protagonists in the opera Carmen called Escamillo and Carmen we all know is this freedom loving gypsy girl who is as free as a bird who goes from one man to another, uh, who has relationships no, not more than six months. And for this piece, this is actually the entrance piece of the character Escamillo. In the Toriador song, Escamillo actually describes a bullfight that actually takes place in the rain. Of course, this is just outright posturing so as to gain the attentions of the beautiful Carmen. And they do eventually fall in love. And this results in a rather complicated triangle relationship between Carmen her ex-lover Don Jose and Escamillo. Now, when Carmen was actually premiered in 1875, this actually caused a scandal in the opera world. Ah! These themes like murder, drug smuggling, prostitution were themes that were never, never portrayed in opera. And this actually resulted or hailed in a new wave of, brought in a new movement in opera called the Very Small Movement, where where the protagonists are no longer nobles, kings, queens, dilts, or, or, or people who are in prominent positions, but the ordinary man on the street. And their passions, their feelings, their everyday lives are brought onto the opera stage. <laughs> from Rossini, another very, very familiar tune that you probably might have heard somewhere. And this piece is taken from William Tell, which is Rossini's opera, from its overture. An overture is an instrumental introduction to an opera. So if the opera actually tells about a drama that's going to end the fall and the characters actually sing their stories, the overture is actually an instrumental prelude before the start of the story. And usually, in this case, the composers will introduce a lot of musical themes in the overture that you will eventually hear as the opera progresses, as the story unfolds. Every year, British Airways brings 24 million people together. British Airways, 
the world's favorite airline. Now, the song that you've heard from the British Airways ad is a familiar one, especially for those who grew up in the 80s and in the 90s, um, which is my generation, of course. And um, Dilip's opera, Lac Mer, is not often performed in today's opera stages. However, this song has still remained a popular concert piece for two female voices, the soprano, the high female voice, and the mezzo-soprano, the middle female voice. What you heard on the ad was actually a variation, a modification of the actual piece. So let us now hear the original duet. people who have watched The Fifth Element, I'm sure you must have wondered what song was the alien Blava Laguna singing in The Fifth Element. Of course, the, the second part of the aria was something which was improvised and was not part of opera, but the first part of her song actually comes from the opera by Don City Lucia di Lamamo, which actually is a, a so-called mad scene. Now, what is a mad scene? Oh! A mad scene is a scene where the, the protagonist actually goes mad, and actually in that mad scene when she loses her her sanity, she reveals all sorts of uh, conflicting feelings uh, of sadness, of anguish, of, of desperation. So you probably wondered, what was this? Such a forlorn song, such a melancholic, such a sad song which the alien Plava Laguna was actually singing. In Lucio di Lamamore, it talks about the rival families between Ravenswood 
and uh, Lamamour. And uh, Lucio di Lamamour is because of the rivalry and the enmity between uh, her family and that of her lovers, she is forced to marry another. And when she realizes that her lover has actually spurned her, she actually goes crazy and she kills her bridegroom on the wedding night. After that, she launches into this very, very extended scene of sadness, of desperation, and she eventually, at the end of the scene, she actually just dropped dead. The music that was featured in The Fifth Element is actually the first part of what we call the Lucia's Mad Scene. So if you watch The Fifth Element, you'll probably find this music very, very familiar. Gianni Schicchi's O Mio Babino Caro, sung by the soprano Lauretta, probably one of opera's most beautiful tunes written for the soprano voice. You would probably recognize this as one of the most romantic pieces, as written full of passion, full of sentiment and an expression of love. Although in the actual case, Puccini probably intended this aria to be sung with a little bit of satire, with a little bit of girlish petulance on part of Lauretta, to get her way with her father to approve of her marriage with Rinuccio. I bet you even knew what song it was before the singer even started singing, right? So in case you didn't know, that was the Habanera from Bizet's Carmen. And this tune, obviously from opera, has become so popular that it has been converted into a pop song and has been sung by singers from all over the world in different languages. So you'll probably be curious to hear how it sounds like in its original form. So here goes. Oh, <laughs> 
yes, the number one position goes to the wedding march from Wagner's Low and Great, which was an opera written by Wagner in 1850, and the wedding march was made popular when it was used as a processional wedding march for the marriage between Victoria and Frederick William of Prussia in 1858. And since then, this chorus has been used in wedding ceremonies all around the world. So unless you've never been to a wedding or you've never been married yourself, you would probably have heard this tune before. Ironically though, a wedding which is supposed to symbolize pureness and trust between the two spouses somehow becomes rather ironic in light of the faithlessness of Elsa, who is the character, who is the bride in the wedding ceremony in Wagner's Lou and Green. So now I've given you 10 tunes from opera, which you now can't deny that you don't know opera. If you feel that these 10 tunes are popular ones that you have probably heard before, please feel free to comment in the comment box below. And however, if you disagree, and if you feel that there are other tunes that I may not have put inside this week's episode, please also feel free to comment in the comment box. If you liked today's episode, please feel free to subscribe to the Martin Home channel and also click the notification bell for new uploads. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! <laughs>